Yeah, yeah, AGK Jamal. It's your girl, Dev. And we don't know where the fuck that nigga Nana Man at, but yo, it's the problematic safe place. Hey, <laughs> I thought we <laughs> wouldn't even gonna mention him. I, was just, I mean, you know, people wanna know where he is. I don't, I don't think he anybody here. wanna know. <laughs> just him, but. So everybody's gonna be asking about the shades, but it's all good. We'll let him clear that up next week. If the next time. <laughs> Hey yo, can we, uh, we gotta start this shit off right. Hey, can you put that dreams and nitro nightmare intro? We see, see what you've been doing all yeah. week. <laughs> yeah, man, I tell you, it doesn't feel like it didn't feel like Meek was home until this album dropped. El, turn turn that shit up, Jedi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I used to break the times like this. To rhyme like this so yo. Grind like that. To shine like this. In a matter of Champions is out. Shit in the back I ain't mad. Yo. So yo, uh, yeah. So like, I started. Uh, I I listened to the album, right? So, yeah, I do. So it just came out. It just came out. It just dropped Friday, right? That was the first day it dropped. Right. So, yeah. So I only gave it one listen. You know, one listen. So I didn't really get a chance to dive deep. You know, mm-hmm. but just off a of first listen, I have to say, album is dope. As far as me, I'm not even. I wouldn't even identify as a Meek Mill fan. Mm-hmm. But for me, looking at him as an artist, the album was dope. Yeah, I'm not a huge Meek Mill fan. I probably haven't listened to any of his mixtapes or albums in its entirety. Uh-huh. Um, I've listened to like the songs that are popular or like you know stuff like that, but I didn't listen to his whole new album either. Um, but I did listen to some more tracks than I have on his previous albums, and I, mm-hmm. I would say it's pretty lit. I mean, I've yeah. seen like a little buzz online about it being a classic. Man, you you know niggas go call an hour and a half long album right. a classic ten minutes after it drop. Right, you like know? Twitter don't count when it comes to albums. They yeah, like everything is a classic. Everything, but. but you- People are saying it's like his best project. Okay, I feel the same way. My only critique, and it's going to sound weird, and maybe I need to give it another listen because again, I'm off one listen. I felt there were too many bangers and not enough substance. And this is what I mean. Meek has been through a hell of a lot the past Mm -hmm. year. Okay, from getting, you know, obviously he dealt with that black judge, the black female judge that had a vendetta against him. Okay. Of course, he dealt with the, the fallout with Nikki. I heard the she breakup. was on. Uh, she was on Nikki payroll. <laughs> you think the judge was? A, you say the judge was a barb? Hey, maybe you <laughs> oh, know shit. Nikki stopping bags. Maybe she was trying to stop his bags hey, too. Because they say a war on the street is the barbs are broke. But if 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 the barbs have infiltrated the legal system, I'm oh joking. shit. That's let, a, let me love, go ahead and you, they ain't got that much power. They ain't even make uh, Nikki album number one. So <laughs> they ain't got that much power. Damn. But yo, yeah, and then what else? Oh yeah, so the fallout with Nikki, what else did he go through? Uh obviously still trying to recover from the Drake. Right. You know, fiasco. I think they recovered. I think um man, like I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get into that. We'll unpack yeah, that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, but but overall Given all the shit Meek went through and then his, you know, his time in prison, I wanted to hear a lot more about those experiences the way you just spoke about on the album. You know, don't get me wrong, the bangers were lit. Kind of wanted some J Cole. Yeah, well, no, not even J Cole. No, nah, not not J well, Cole. Well, I mean, like or... how he like gets like he be talking like deep shit and talking about shit that he going through that we don't necessarily be knowing about, and we be like, oh, oh okay. dang, okay, you getting a little deep on here. Yeah, you kind of wanted some substance in that form. Yeah, so I not wanted... literally some J Cole, but like you know the lyricism. And you know, just talking about real, real life shit. Yeah, like I wanted this to be Meek's "Me Against the World" album, right? You know, which is my favorite Pac album. And Pac made that album immediately after getting out of jail. Mm-hmm. You know, and the sub- well, he went in jail like that long. I mean, it was long enough. It was long enough, and he put out a classic right afterwards. I mean, I know I'm talking about Meek. Like, oh, Meek. yeah, Meek wasn't in jail like that long to be like. Let me tell y'all about everything I learned in jail. <laughs> but I'm, I, I get what yeah, you're yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like, you know, you had a lot of time to reflect and think about things. And so you could have poured all that into the music. But then again, who knows? I mean, he released this album. And everybody knows, like, in the music industry, you got to release something that's going to do numbers. Yeah. So I'm sure he probably has a bunch of tracks that, you know, maybe he'll release them later or, like, put it on, like, a deluxe version or something like mm-hmm. that. Or, you know, just, like, keep them for themselves and, like, you know, put it into one of his, like, vault albums, you yeah. know, and release them eventually. But, because that's what I'm hoping Wayne does. Because I know Wayne got uh, all them fired. I like, think Wayne is done. I know, it, I know it, he's all done. all respect to Wayne. I know he's done, but it's, like, one of those, like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, I like 
I feel like he should come out with like a greatest hits album, mm-hmm. but it not be like his actual greatest hits, like his greatest like hits that he never released. So like the B sides, pretty much. Like the unreleased. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you know, honestly, Wayne at this point, he's Kobe in the game. It's time to retire. Yeah, you know? I mean, yeah, I don't want him putting out new music with these little little rappers, but yeah, I do want to like. I'm interested to see what he has under his belt. Word, word. But uh, and with me and, and my favorite tracks on there, I think were Oodles and Noodles, Babies. Uh, what's that one called? The one, oh, of course, was Beef with uh Jay Z and, yes. and Rick Ross. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, I had to keep listening to that Jay Z verse. I said, nigga, "Man, Hove killed that shit." I was literally, I was literally in the car by myself, yelling, "Yes, okay!" Like I was catching the fucking word. Man, like, if I see that, they Jay Z has turned his verse into mm-hmm. Drake captions, like for niggas. Yes, because like typically us females, we hear Drake captions or City Girl now, uh-huh. but y'all, like I, I've seen. Drake's verse on so many people's like Instagram feeds, they stories and everything, and it's just like everybody's resonate with that shit. That shit go hard. Hell yeah! Like people, it, I saw on Twitter, they were like, "He should not go this hard at 49." <laughs> it's like, why not? That nigga it. got the world in his hands. I right love now. it, man. I love how hip hop is aging now. You know, right. it seemed like it seemed like if you were all approaching 30, you were done in rap now. But right. Like Jay Z, I think with his four four out four 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 album. He made it okay to age in hip hop. Right. You know? And on Twitter, you know, um, I saw a tweet that said, like, this isn't, they're not athletes. Like, mm-hmm. when you are a writer, like, that doesn't, like, stop you from, like, a certain age isn't going to stop you from being a writer. Yeah, look at rock stars, okay? Rock and roll artists. They can rock out all the way. Look at the, authors. The 60s like, I mean, shit, authors you know? be writing stuff, like, their whole career, like, from teenager uh, up until their deathbed. So it's like, you know, if you got that gift, you got that gift no matter how old you are. Exactly. You just got to hope your uh, memory don't go or your, you know, <laughs> your functions. And, you know, you got to keep that going to be able to perform it yeah. and speak it. But, you know. Yeah, Hove ripped that shit. And he probably was going off the top, too. You know, yeah. I think he did say it at the end. I love when he does that shit. He did that again on, he did that before on uh, Rick Ross's Three Kings. That's that track. It was on yeah. an older Rick Ross album. I love when he does that I remember that, shit. that song. Hey, yo, let's play that What's Beef. I mean, not What's what's Free, which is a play on What's Beef by Biggie. Right. But play I want to start off from the, the Rick Ross diss, okay? Did you catch that? Did you catch that Takashi diss? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I want to talk Man. about that. Man. Here it is. Gang, gang, now you want to rap. Record your rich, y'all just caught him on the tap. Looking for a bond, lawyers want to tax. Purple hair, got them faggots on your best. All right, let's let's cut it right there. We're gonna, pop, we're gonna pick it up with Jay Z. We're gonna pick it up again. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's <laughs> unpack that one, okay? So Rose throwing shots at 6 9 behind bars. Mm hmm. Okay, for those who, who, who missed the lines, I'm gonna read them. He said, Screaming gang, gang, now you wanna rap. Racketeering charges, caught him on the tap. Looking for a band, lawyers want to tax. I'm oh, sorry, looking for a bond. <laughs> lawyers want to tax. Purple hair, got the maggots on your back. Okay? And you know you know what the maggot stands for. Yeah. All right? Now. Is it is it okay for him to use that word? Like, I thought we, I thought in rap we kind of like banished that. Here's well, what I, I mean, in the world we banished it, but in rap nothing is banished, I guess. I think there are certain niggas that can get away with it just because I think the LGBT community... There, I think this is how I look. This is how I look at it. There's certain people that could cross over and appeal to all audiences, and I think those are the ones who can't get away saying that shit. A nigga like Twenty One Savage, he could drop a couple maggots, and I don't think people are really going to expect much more. He has, yeah, he has. Now a nigga like Donald Glover, hell no. Nah. Okay, I think if you have that, that well, I feel like he could do it uh, right and tastefully. He he wouldn't use it as like a um, mm-hmm. insult type of thing. He would use it, don't it in like. But, I, but see, no, I've listened to his songs. Like, he has a lot of um, conscious songs and a lot of, like, different songs. Like, none of, very few of his songs sound the same. Like, you think you listen to a whole nother artist. So I've, mm-hmm. I've heard some of his conscious music, and I, I feel like he could, he could drop it. And mm-hmm. it'd be, like, not, he wouldn't use it as an insult, but no, he would I know. use it. Des, I feel you. But you got to think of the era we in. People don't I give mean, a yeah, fuck I mean, about they, context. Uh... No one gives a fuck about context, okay? If he just drop it, that's all they're going to say. Okay, well, Jay-Z th- made yeah. that. Remember that 444 line in Jay-Z where he said, uh, 
He said something about basically bigging up, uh, talking about how Jewish people have their own businesses, okay? Mm. And blacks don't. Somehow that turned into Jay Z is spatting out anti, you know, Semitism, you know, if I said that right, Semitism. Yeah. Uh, they just know rhetoric. who to target. They try to target people that's getting uh, what I would consider white people money. Exactly. And I hate, I hate that term too, but yeah. I feel what you're saying though. Because it's like a different, like you, you cross over, like everybody loves you. So we got to, like, yeah. We got to come for you because, like, Rick Ross, he ain't out here. I'm sure he getting money, but he ain't getting, like, white people yeah, money. Yeah, niggas on, on mostly it. support Rick yeah, Ross. Yeah, I mean, he owns Wingstop. For well, yeah. It. Like, come on now. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> But, um, I mean, Rick Ross has been problematic, and he will continue to be problematic. So. Molly in the champagne, you ain't even know it. <laughs> yeah, man, that line, when I I remember when I first heard it, I was like. You had a replay. Like, like wait a minute. <laughs> Like, I think that's right, sir. Like, <laughs> and you know, this always got to me, too. I know we kind of getting off, but like that line, it just surprises, not really surprises me, but the selective morality that we have when we listen to music. Like, it's okay for rappers to talk about, yo, I just shot a hundred niggas or I'm selling to the fiends or, you right. know, you, you being this super hard gangster nigga. But then if somebody throw out a rape line, it's like, oh, my God. Right, oh my God. like you talking about uh, <laughs> killing whole communities and like you poisoning know? the community with, with crack, and yeah. but so you talk about somebody being gay or raping somebody, you you, you out of here. We draw the line <laughs> there, you know. So that I call that selective morality. That, that's what that is. Yeah, I mean it's true. I'm, yeah, mm-hmm. people get away with a lot. I mean, even some of Wayne lyrics, like if you listen to them, like you be like, wait a minute. But I mean, even when I mean, I'm talking about when Wayne was on top. Like, yeah, but he was that was a king different of freestyles. Time, though. That was a different right. time. It's a different time, but it's like, dang, like no matter what, we should have never let nobody get away with it because you promoting that type of culture, mm-hmm. and that culture that you promoting is what kids are now have grown up on, and now over here doing drugs and all types of stuff because of it. So, That's true. That, that is true. I think not Wayne, just in rap, but in life. You yeah. Know? Like what? What was that? Freaknik. Freaknik. Yeah. Like uh-huh. at. And all the mess that would go down over there and stuff. Like, I'm sure it was a lot of sexual assault going on there Ooh. or, or you know, a lot of drugs and stuff. But yeah. it was like kind of the times and everything. So, right. Woo. We didn't know any better. I mean, I, right. I went there. But, you know, people didn't know any better back then. Yeah. So, so going back to the bars, right? Do you think Rick was wrong? Okay. Was Rose wrong for throwing these shots at 6 9 after he Look. got locked up? Let me let me look at it again. All right, I mean, this is a fresh freestyle. That's yeah. pretty lit, though. Like, I heard he went I love back it to when, redo his verse. I, I love it when they do that. Yeah. Like, because it's like, he probably was already dissing him. And mm-hmm. I was like, I got a better diss for you because you in jail now. So, like, I don't think he was wrong. I mean, at the end of the day, everybody has a problem with 6 9 except for 50 Cent. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason for the beef. Cause you right. know Rose and Fifty, they all they, you know they went at it. They didn't see eye to eye. Maybe no, cause you can't just like beef with somebody else cause they associated with Fifty. Cause Fifty don't even like he, like he just using him for clout. You know, That's it's true. just like they just both feeding off each other. Yeah, it ain't like they really like fuck with each other like that. You know, mm-hmm. so I, I don't think it's that. I think he probably just you know it's just like you a clown in this industry and you done came up off my people like yeah. so i'm gonna dish you like now, you, and you're not real i think you know I, I think it's more so the fact that he's not a real gangster like he's trying to portray yeah because you know like rick ross has this image of being this gangster person he's although officer ricky right although <laughs> worked in the prison. security guard and yeah. whatnot but you know um they don't they don't take that stuff like especially when you false claiming uh gangs and whatnot but that's what's hot right now so like here's my here's my take on it. Okay, I love it. I love the bars. It's good hip hop. Everybody know I'm with the shits. I'm with the beef in hip hop, right? Right. But I look at this the same way I look at Vic when he came at X, you know, after he died. Aww. I feel like there's no there's no I get you get no points for dissing a nigga when he can't be in a position to respond. But I like I shit, said, he... I didn't hear shit from Rose when Six Nine was out. I didn't hear shit from you. When he was yelling Trey Way when he was free, why come at him? But now? the nigga ain't dead. He might possibly get out of jail. He possibly JT, dead to the world. J- JT from the City Girls is over here recording whole ass albums and she in jail. Is she facing motherfucking 25 to but life? Is she in jail right now? Is she facing 25 to it life? It don't matter. It matters. Every- you think no. I will give a fuck about this is a rap why nigga the- and so I'm fighting for my you- life? I don't understand how you can be with the shits. But then, as soon as somebody go to jail, no, that's off limits. No, no, they no, can't no. It's not. Themselves. It's not like, saying. No, no. I just. I didn't say it's off limits. I'm saying, as a consumer, I don't respect you. 
You get no points for dissing a nigga that's not in a position to respond. But what if it's a respond. case like what I said? He already had a bar dissing him and then came back and edited it because I, now I have an even better diss for you because you were in jail. All we know is what we see. That's all I could go off of is what we see. And the way it looks like we didn't, we didn't know you and 6 9 had an issue until after he got locked up, until after Treyway got shut down. But who says they down. have an issue? Just because he threw shade at him doesn't mean they have an issue. Well, it was a shot. And I'm just saying you threw the shots after Treyway it went down. Maybe he's associated with Treyway. Maybe he fooled with them. Maybe he, uh, you know, like on they, maybe it's been some secret stuff that we don't know about. Either way, I, I don't feel like he has to be justified in throwing shots at anybody because at the end of the day, like you could say, you could be an up and coming rapper that don't nobody know about and be mm -hmm. throwing shots at somebody you never met. So like it, it's just. But the thing is that person you never met can always respond. They're not dead or locked up. Oh my gosh, that nigga can respond. JT is recording whole albums in jail. <laughs> totally different. It's not totally Six different. 6 9 is fighting for his life right now. This nigga is facing 25 Somebody to life. Somebody can stab her and tomorrow and she could die in there. Like, she it's knows no she have a rough idea when she getting home. Man. 6 9 does not. <laughs> okay. It don't matter. Nigga has all rainbow hair that and not, shit. They go tear that ass up. You after okay. all, after all the <laughs> shit that Six Nine has done in social media world uh, and in music and everything else, all the trolling he has done, he is not now exempt from the bullshit because he's in jail. Six Nine trying to worry about keeping niggas from pulling that rainbow hair back. Okay. okay. The kid got bigger problems than worrying about all right. dissing so, the rap nigga. So this should be <laughs> this should be very small in the grand scheme of things. That's all I'm saying. Like you don't get exempt. Like you can't be a shit talker and then it's like, no, nah, now nah, I'm in jail, nigga. You can't talk shit about me. Like, no, I actually can because no matter what like, I was going to be on this song. Uh -huh. I, I still feel like he probably already had a diss for him. And that's why we he didn't went back hear it. And, either way, like, why would he Why would he have a diss for, like, why would he not say anything about 6 9 but then come back and write something in about him? Like, I, I feel like he just wrote a better verse about him. Yeah. That sounds all good. Don't get me wrong. I love the bars, but I can't respect you. Because oh how, when, when, we don't know if we ever going to get a clap back from 6 9 And this is, this is like the shit that people look for in uh, hip-hop. Like, just like with Jay-Z's verse. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, oh, it's like beef with Kanye. Like, people get riled up about stuff like that. They get excited. Like, this gets what people's, like, blood is boiling about in hip-hop. But hip I'm, in, I'm into the exchange. I want the back and forth, okay? Now, obviously, 6 9 he's not going to be able to help back, back to forth with Rick Ross. But I want to at least like to see him do his little antics and shit. I want to see him at least do like his little his retarded skits and shit like that. I'm you know, trolling, see, trolling Rick Ross. I'm trying to see if they have any like history or something. Yeah, because to my knowledge, this was the first time we heard Rose had an issue. This is the first time. And for that, but I like, can't respect but it. But 6 9 be trolling in, in uh, the comments on, on social media. So maybe he commented under something with Rick Ross baby mama or something like that. Like, that's not far-fetched. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to just, like, look into it and see if I if I know if there's any beef. Because I don't feel like Rick Ross will come at him for no reason. Huh? Yeah. All right. Hey, what's up? Is this, is this White Donna? Who the fuck is this? <laughs> I seen a number on the page, so I called the number. I thought this was the club number, baby. Oh, you got okay. the wrong number, sweetie. I don't know if this is a prank. All right. If it is, but, uh, God bless Hang you. Up, saying it. <laughs> oh, no. I was like, was this Nana? <laughs> right. Yo. But, uh, hey, let's go. But uh, that's my take on that. All right. Props for the shots. I love it. I love I love the messiness. But when a nigga's not in a position to defend himself, it makes it boring. I don't respect it. Man, I don't know. I was just trying to look on online <laughs> and see if I see any history of their beef. Either way, I don't care. Like, mm -hmm. it's exciting. It's fun. I mean, I feel like everybody's going to throw shots at him because he's this white boy coming into this uh, hip-hop. I mean, Well, he's he Mexican. Mexican, whatever. He ain't black. <laughs> and you know how we feel about people that ain't black coming in and trying to dominate hip hop. Unless yeah. you Eminem, it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So, and Cardi B is another, you know, but she's like, I don't know. She's Come on, a, she's Cardi she B. Right. Like, right. <laughs> but either way, like, this nigga, like, just be Cardi about her money, she be minding her business. This mm -hmm. nigga over here trolling everybody. So, <laughs> it, it was needed. Anyways, let's I, move on to the Jay Z verse. Jay Z, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's play. Let's play a little snippet from that whole shit. We trying not to get shut down by YouTube. Let's play a little snippet. Right. So fast forward. Uh, yeah. About like a minute. A little more. 
stay free. Made a few mistakes, but this yeah, keep going. There we go. Okay, 100% of Ace of Spade worth half a beat. Oh. Rock Nation, half of that. That's my piece. It was surprised when Jay Z get hey, the hey, pool. I'm trying to hear this. <laughs> 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 I didn't mean to interrupt the words. <laughs> You run a checker, but they never give you leverage. No red hat, don't Michael and Prince me. And yay, they separate you when you got Michael and Prince's DNA. Uh, I ain't one of these house niggas you bought. My house like a resort. My house bigger than yours. My spot. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> right. I love yeah, when you talk right about there. me. Yo. I love when. No, we got to talk. No. no, we got to get to the. Um... No, no, the reason I started off is because you two has this thing. Like, you go, we go and play snippets at a time. Man. We gonna, we gonna keep it going. I but wanted yo. to talk about the um, the chitlin line. Oh yeah 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 Dang. yeah. No, nah, we right. gonna anyway, talk. we could talk about it, but I wanted to just hear it because that that whole verse was fire. Yeah. Like oh my gosh, that verse. The other way uh, he could just stunt. You know, it's like he, you can't even argue with him. He kicks straight at facts. All. At my all. spouse, come on, man. It... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more need to be said. Say it. <laughs> like I ain't got to say it. Oh, like, what you mean? It don't get no better than this. Although he cheated. But you know, whatever. Uh, I don't know though. Beyonce be him. cheating with her eyes the way she be looking at LeBron. Well, well, I would be too if my nigga stepped out. You better be lucky. That's the only thing on my body cheating. But see, we don't have images and photos of Jay Z with these other chicks. Beyonce, we have several. We have a gallery of all the times she been eye fucking LeBron. All right. That's so disrespectful. Okay. Until mm. until you actually put some action behind it, it ain't disrespectful. It'd be one thing if she on the phone with LeBron for two, three hours every night or something like that. That's emotion cheating. Mm -hmm. If she's fucking LeBron, that's physical cheating. But just looking, y'all look at ass all day. But it's like this though, okay? Like with y'all, right? I don't think like I first I already believe that women won't break up or divorce a guy. For for pretty much Y'all will stay with a man if he's cheating in most cases. I think the only exception or the biggest what? exception when women don't stay with men is when everybody knows that she cheated, that, that he cheated. I think it's only a problem when everybody knows. I think if no one knows so about saying it. saying that women will stay with a man as long as her pride isn't damaged in the sense of everybody else knowing and exactly. she's not embarrassed. Exactly. Mm. Am I wrong? Yes, you're wrong. I'm wrong? Yes, you are wrong. <laughs> what do you mean? Most females I've talked to say that they would stay with a guy if he cheated. Most females ex accept cheating. But I think it's only a problem when everybody knows about it. Yo. Because y'all are so afraid of what people think. Y'all are so afraid of what of being judged. Mm -hmm. If everybody's looking at you, like, why I can the only fuck is she still with him? I can only why is she for myself. I'm not going to stick around for somebody cheating just because whether everybody knows or just I know. Like, it's not... It, I would have to look into the situation to see if it's worth reconciling like Beyonce and Jay-Z did mm -hmm. or if I just need to chuck the deuces. See, most dudes could care less. Most dudes cannot to, to tolerate most cheating. Most dudes, uh, right. Like, y'all, y'all girl, your girls step out on you, you done. Uh -huh. Fuck yeah. So, like, I have the same, like, approach except <laughs> I have a little more, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit of more of grace to it. Like, okay, let me mm -mm. see. If this is something worth reconciling, let me see. Like, if you done cheated with 50 bitches, like, of course I'm finna leave your ass. Nah, ain't no reconciliation, babe. Nah, because it's at that point, at that point, you're unclean the way I look at you. You are unclean. And y'all okay? not, you when y'all cheat, when niggas cheat, y'all not unclean. You know it's not like, the now same. Like, we, now we both gotta go because to the clinic to get tested what because y'all look at is, slanging dick. That's because y'all don't look at men by, the man by himself. You look at the lifestyle that he provides. Okay, I think most women aren't willing to abandon that lifestyle for the sake of an infidelity. But like men, said, men typically only... look at y'all as a woman by yourself. So when you cheat on us, when you step out on us, we can't see you in any other light than you fucking some other nigga. Probably sucked his dick. That's what we see when we look at you after you cheat. All right, so <laughs> you definitely over here getting, you thinking about some old shit, huh? You pissed off. Man, well, I don't know. Like I said, I can only speak for myself. It's not like, for one, in a relationship, like we just boyfriend, girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm definitely leaving your ass if you ever cheat on me because I could find another. But in a husband, mm -hmm. we done took like this, this vow to each other. What vow? I would have to, you know, your wedding vows mm -hmm. when you get married. So, so death do us apart? No, I don't necessarily believe in that. I don't but believe now in that we're in a different type of this is a real commitment. Relationships, boyfriend, girlfriend shit, that shit ain't commitment. Uh -huh. That's it, it's it's a form of commitment, but not a real commitment because you're still single in a lot of eyes of a lot of things. 
But it's an old head way but, of looking at things. I mean, no, it's a realistic, it's a financial way of looking at things, actually, because if something happens to me, your ass can't make decisions for me. Mm-hmm. If I die, you ain't getting my life insurance. If um, if I own property, you don't own half That's that property. That's if you believe in the legal, the legal contract behind it, not necessarily the spiritual union. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess, well, you also somebody who like ain't in a rush to get married. So I guess that's why you look at it. But I'm looking at it in the sense of like, you don't really have no ties to me other than your emotional tie, your mm-hmm. emotional commitment to me. Yeah. Other than that, it's not like, unless we literally buy property together and put both our names on it, like we don't really have no financial commitment to each other. Okay. So if you cheat on me, I will get up and leave your ass because I don't have to like stick around for this. However... If we look at Beyonce and Jay-Z, you know, they they married, got kids, et cetera, et cetera. Well, at this time, they only had one kid. You know, I'm sure they had a lot of joint businesses and ventures and stuff. Like, yeah. it's a partnership when you become married. I'm, exactly. I'm not talking about in the sense of, like, oh, we took a vow, and now, like, we just have to spiritually be together until death do us part. Fuck that shit. But who would Beyonce get? Like, like if you were a move up from Jay-Z? A white could... billionaire? Or uh, I, I feel like she would try to get a black billionaire, but... She would probably end up like dating a couple Is white there billionaires. A black billionaire? I don't know. Uh, That's why I said try yeah, because like you got to go up. You can't go down. The only person I could see Beyonce could go up with would be Obama. Well, she can't have Obama. I mean, obviously, you can't have Obama. But I'm just saying, if that were to, if that situation somehow, and was I feel with, like so. that was part of her situation. Well, I mean, because she could really have anybody. Mm-hmm. But I think like in the grand scheme of things, like because if you leave a nigga, you want to move up from there. Yeah. So it's like, what her would her options be? Like she had to go like Rihanna did and find her like a ducked off as millionaire billionaire. Mm. Yeah, I could. I don't. I don't see where B can go from Jay Z. But I don't think that that's what kept her in that relationship. I think that he actually put in the work to stay with her mm-hmm. and you know like and that and that's what i'm saying like that's what i mean by grace like like i said if you fucked 50 bitches out here like no we there's nothing for us to talk about because you have just no regard for me if it was one or two not to say that i'm gonna stay mm-hmm. but i will have to evaluate the situation and see what type of work that you're putting in not just in that moment not just in that though the three months uh after the six months after i'm talking about for the rest of your fucking life because nigga you are not my bitch <laughs> See, that's almost as bad as being on being on probation for like ten years or so, like what the judge offered me. Right. You know, Kodak was but in the you same. Did that to yourself. And, and you know what, you, Kodak? You couldn't you couldn't <laughs> use your freedoms in the correct form, so now you have none. I'm good, okay. I rather my my like Killmonger said, my ancestors knew that. <laughs> you already know this guy. My ancestors knew that it was better to die free than live the rest of my life as a slave. Fuck this shit, okay? This yeah. relationship ain't meant to be, yo. No, I mean, who would Jay Z go to? <laughs> Jay Z could go to anybody. You know yeah, what? He could. I found he's someone that she could go to. Who? Michael Jordan. He's a billionaire. Man, fuck Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't yeah. think she would like him. Well, okay, yeah, Jordan. But George, George there is there's a list of like nine that that she could choose from. Oh shit! I didn't even yeah, I didn't know there. I really LeBron, didn't know there was any. I'm sure LeBron would leave Savannah for Beyonce. Yeah, of course, of course. She would be the next possible she wouldn't option. Even have to, to be honest, she wouldn't even have to go to nobody. She would just have to publicly be seen with somebody, and Jay Z would give up on life. Just imagine that. That's so disrespectful. If those two in and her and LeBron get together, because then you can make the argument she's been emotionally cheating for years. That is fucked up. Why, but see, why does the, the woman always get the bad rep? But the, the man is just like, oh, he just cheated. Like, well, I don't believe black men cheat, period. But I'm just entertaining this for the sake of conversation. Right, so back to his but. lyrics. Um, <laughs> yeah, the lyrics, lyrics were fire. Um, we can look up the rest of, let me see. I think I got his verse up. Or oh, I had it up. Before I started looking up the Rick Ross beef. Mm-hmm. Oh, here it is. Okay, so Jay-Z. Woo, 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 woo. That's Meek again, Meek again. Okay. And Meek killed that hoe, by the way. He said, ooh, this was such a fire-ass verse. And it's <laughs> long, too, but I just wanted to talk about... I just want to talk about the Chitlins thing, because that was just... That was like, a hard hey. bar. Okay. The chitlin, yeah. Uh, we started without food in our mouth. They gave us pork and pig intestines. Shit, you discarded that. Mm-hmm. We ingested that. We made the project a wave. You came back. We reinvested. And uh, you came back, reinvested, and gentrified it. Took niggas sense of pride. Now that's how. Now that's free. And then people stole the soul and hit niggas with three sixties, huh? 
I ain't got a billion streams. I got a billion dollars inflating numbers. Like we supposed to be happy about this. And he, he goes on to talk about billboard and just like how billboard don't mean shit. And <laughs> which, which of course he feels that way. Just like, like Beyonce said, if I wanted, uh, if I gave a fuck about streaming numbers, I would have put uh lemonade on Spotify. Yeah. That was some hard ass shit. And you know what's female. crazy? Both of them. It's amazing how they talk their shit. But everything they're saying is factual. Right. Like they they are living and backing up everything that they're saying. But I mean, that's what I'm <laughs> saying is like why they're like meant to be together. I'm not saying that Beyonce is like stuck or like, like fuck all that shit. At the end of the day, she could leave him and just be by her damn self and be Oprah in this world and just mm -hmm. have a little boyfriend on the side or whatever. But um, I, I just feel like they both have like a different view and understanding of the world than a lot of other people in the music industry because they're not like in the music industry they're they're like kind of of it and like kind of like looking down and seeing how everything else is going and they've like moved like you know make sure they made the right moves with everything and you know they haven't been trapped in good contracts or you know they've started their own labels and like how they have title and everything like they don't give a fuck about streaming numbers like we got uh -huh. title nigga like you know how many people <laughs> got subscriptions to this shit <laughs> Like, we don't care whether we got the numbers or not. We still get in checks. Yeah, because Tidal still ain't fucking with Apple Music now. Yeah, I don't no, even think they're fucking with Spotify. It, it, you know? I, I don't, I personally don't like Tidal. It looks a little, um, it's not that very user friendly mm -hmm. to me. But I do sometimes buy like a month and just like listen to Lemonade because you can't <laughs> listen to <laughs> Lemonade. Yeah. Lemonade is a dope album. It is. It's like, oh my gosh. The only song that sucks that uh, the world is in agreement on is Sandcastles. I don't know the track list like that. Oh. But I, I like well, the visuals. Well, I only visuals. said that because it was a meme about it. <laughs> it was like when mm. uh, we built Sandcastles, start playing, and you in the shower, and you trying to reach for your phone, and you like, ah, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> next song, next song. Because it's just like... You know, yeah. I mean, it's not a bad song. It's just like that that sappy ass shit when we talking about how niggas ain't shit on this album. Yeah, <laughs> I think the best thing is Beyonce's visuals. Yeah, you know? yeah, she started this shit. All you bitches is their sons. This is true. I I can't even lie. It's no, actually, Michael Jackson started it. I mean, yeah, yeah. MJ started, but yeah, the new as but far as the new heavily, wave, she was heavily influenced by him, and he they they had a special relationship. So, hmm. heard MJ. See. Yeah, like that was cool. Like she did a whole. That's right. They did a tribute to. I her. forgot who said it. I think it was. Uh, I forgot who told who. What, it was a comedian who said this, but said that he remember Michael Jackson at the party, and he was a Diddy's party. I think Diddy threw a party, and Michael Jackson walked in, and the first thing he asked was, "Is Beyonce here?" <laughs> <laughs> it's just so hard to imagine that, but yo, Michael, yeah, they did that. Um, I I don't know what award show that was, but they did a tribute to him. Like mm -hmm. Destiny's Child did a tribute to him. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's so, dope. Yeah. I mean, like, you can't beat that. Like, mm -hmm. ain't, ain't nobody ever going to be better than Beyonce. Bitch, you didn't know Michael. Like, so you can't mm -hmm. be better than Beyonce. <laughs> True. You didn't know Michael or Prince. You you don't, you won't have a chance to meet them. Like, she learned from the best. Yeah. She's definitely this generation's, like, living legend right now. Right. Like, she is a, she's becoming a living legend. Right. So I see that. Yo, but wasn't there something you wanted to mention about the album? Uh, with yes, the Nick Drake stuff. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, of course, like, Drake posted his support about everything. Um, he posted this funny-ass video on his Instagram. Oh. Man, we should have um, put that for our media. But, um, yeah, he just, like, was just showing me mad love about the album and everything, which is, like, so heartwarming because it's, like, these niggas, like, really had beef out here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, although they had beef, they didn't cross no lines or just, like, you know, it wasn't, like, Pusher T level where he, like, nah. outed him for having a whole kid and shit. <laughs> that was legendary. But, um, uh, you know, it's just heartwarming to see these niggas are back at it, back on top of I do other. like them working together rather than beefing. Right. I mean, I'm all for the shits, but I do, I think it's a good look. Because, I mean, you can't, it, it will hurt Meek in the long run if he's constantly trying to redeem himself from back to back. Like, right. that was a moment. I mean, and Drake even made it with Chris Brown, too. So he just owned, like, this path of, like, I, I think we're seeing Drake evolve into, like, an actual man. Mm -hmm. Now, this situation with the son, I'm still, you know, on the fence about because, like, you know, like, had Pusha not said it, would we have ever publicly known about it? Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like Drake has, you know, kind of just realized like, okay, like some shit is bigger than, than this music shit. So let me just like stop beefing. Cause yeah. you know, but, um, an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. So on his Instagram, he posted Meek's album. Yeah. Um, but you know whose album he didn't post? Who? 
Nicki Minaj's. And oh. so, you know, like, ain't nobody been talking about this shit. Mm-hmm. So on Drake's album, he has um, a song featuring Nicki, but it's not actually like a verse or a feature. That's just mm-hmm. a, a snippet from an old concert mm-hmm. of her, like, performing some shit or whatever. So he used that as, like, uh, whatever. I'm sure he got clearance on it, like, a long time ago yeah. or something. But he ain't nowhere to be seen on Nicki's <laughs> album. And Nicki just recorded the Good Form video. I don't know if you saw that, but nah. Good Form is one of the songs on her album I actually do like. Um, because, like I said, I, I don't think I said it on the show, but Queen wasn't my favorite Nicki album. Like, Nicki and, doesn't really have any good albums. Right. She has good, <laughs> She has albums that will have, like, a handful of good songs. Um, like, what was it? Pink Friday? Or, like, the Pink Print. Yeah. Um, like, it's songs Pink on there. Pink Friday was no, no, I was Pink thinking that was old, Kanye. But, but uh, the Pink Print is um, was the album before Queen. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, it's a good handful of songs on there. I know Forward and Backward. But this Queen album, I just wasn't, like, it wasn't my favorite. But Good Form is one of the songs on there that I just really like. Mm-hmm. And she did the video. And in the video, she actually released, because Wayne's not on the original song, but she put him on the song after the video. Mm-hmm. Um, so the video is the first time we're introduced to his verse. Yeah. And um, in the video, she has Wayne and Tyga. Yeah. But Drake's nowhere to be found in the video. <laughs> so it's kind of like, and you know, she really been, she got that song with Tyga, Drip. And like prior to like a lot of, like she wasn't really fooling with Tyga like that. Like they didn't have no beef or nothing, but it was like. Well, yeah, they Drake did have, they her. did have, well, she had an issue with Tyga. During the whole Kylie Jenner thing, we found out she was 17 or like, well, we knew. Oh, yeah, yeah. But like, I know she. Yo, she claims it wasn't Shay. It was just coincidence. But in her vi- in one of her videos, the video some- with Beyonce where she had the pervert shirt on. Yeah, pervert 17. seventeen. But you know how God works in mysterious ways uh-huh. because her brother is definitely in jail for being a pervert. Right. But um, <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess you know all the beef is over with him. But it's just interesting that Drake is nowhere to be found. So I'm waiting for the tea on their beef. To be released and why they not cool no more. Isn't it all? I mean, come on, man. Nicki been bugging the fuck out. No, yeah, she has. And I'm sure, like, he he just on some, like, like even the Travis Scott thing, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, he has a song with Travis Scott. Like, when she said, oh, you went number one because you released, you know, she just went hating. off on him. It's like, I can't back you up on that. But even that's when Queen came out. You know, Drake's album came out before Queen. Yeah. So, like, it still wasn't, like, no love. Like, she didn't post him. He didn't post her. And, like, I don't know. It's just been this, like, unaccounted time that we have, haven't realized that they not fucking with each other like that. Yeah. Man, I, I think a lot of people in the industry are trying to cut ties or distance themselves away but from Drake Nikki. But Drake was in love with Nikki, so I feel like some shit had to happen. It Nikki ain't changed. This, At least... It ain't this industry stuff. I think something, like, really happened mm-hmm. between them. Like, whether she crossed him or he crossed her or whatever. Maybe it was, like, him reaching out to Meek because Meek said in an interview that, um, you know, prior to him coming out on stage, mm-hmm. like, him and Drake been in talks for, like, the last year. Yeah. So maybe it's that, you know, which is funny Nikki because she was the one that. who was telling him not to respond to Meek when they were together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so irony. Yeah, she just creating chaos everywhere she goes. Yeah, man. But Queen Radio is Queen Radio is dope. I think if this music shit don't work out, I, I think Nikki can't do it. I think Nikki has a future in radio, yo. Man, I I oh I keep saying I'm gonna give it a listen, but I still just can't bring my ears to listen. Yeah. But yo, since we were on six, six nine early, did you hear about the? Did you read the wiretap? Yes, I okay. did. So we go pull up. Can you pull up the wiretap link? All right. So Takashi. All right. We already know he got hit with the Rico charge. Him and the rest of Treyway. Okay, Treyway is no more. Rico. All right. Meek now, has a song called Rico. What'd you say? Re- Meek has a song called Rico. Oh, that's yeah, true. Yeah. So now when you're looking at it, right? When you're looking at the the transcripts. As it reads, it looks like 6 9 may have a shot at clearing his name. Because the way it looks in the transcripts, and lawyers are probably going to use this shit, the gang members are saying he's no longer Treyway. Now, of course, I'm thinking they're meaning that by, you know, that meant that they didn't really mean that literally. They're just pissed. But let me go ahead and read the transcripts, all right? Jones, I believe that's, uh, what's that nigga's name? Shoddy, all right? 6 mm-hmm. manager. manager. They're speaking on the phone. Saying Daniel or Hernandez, that's 6 9 Hernandez is trying to dry snitch <laughs> at the same time, homie. But he's saying, fuck Treyway. Fuck that nigga Treyway. Ain't no nigga Treyway. Fuck Treyway. So this nigga Jordan laughing, okay? That's, uh, right. Yeah, laughing. I'm going to feed him, though. 
Now I understand this gang, you know, this gang like yeah, uh, language. Yeah, they was trying to uh, the. The feds was trying to say, I'm going to feed him means, like, I'm going to kill him or I'm going to, like, give him bullets or whatever. I don't know. Like, I feel mm-hmm. like I feel like that's, like, a term for, like, I'm going to give him something to talk about. Mm-hmm. Like, because they already talking about how he's saying he ain't this, he ain't that. Like, oh, I'm going to give you something to talk about. Yeah. Like, I think it's, I think, I mean, I don't know street lingo either, but, like, just from the context of things, I would think that's, like, the most logical. But it's left to too much interpretation. So I'm wondering how can you really go off of that? So then Jones, he's saying, yo, what you doing? Damn, I don't even want to talk on this, uh, talk on the phone, homie. We got to meet up and talk. So then here we have individual one. I think that's the informant, individual one. He goes, Hernandez is 6'9". Six 6'9", nine. Six nine, definitely humiliating shoddy right now. Jones, that's what that nigga is trying to do. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying, he trying a little. He's trying to separate himself. All right. So now they're talking about they know that he's trying, you know, this was following the Breakfast Club interview where he gets on and he says, hey, uh, he's no longer with. Well, he first he said that he fired his entire staff. Right. And then he went on to say that Treyway was just some shit that he, he made up that he just said, you know, it's not even real. I don't think this is enough to clear his name. Like, but, because you got he got songs where he's saying Treyway. He got and And I get mm-hmm. that he's trying to say, oh, this is just a character that I play in the music industry mm-hmm. to make money. However, like. It is innocent until proven guilty, and they can prove that you know all these niggas up that's a part of Treyway. Yeah. So it's like if you're not a part of it in some way or some form, how do you know these people? But hold how on. are you associated with Hold them? on, I think they, they toss him a lifeline, they do toss him a little lifeline. Okay, so let me let me scroll, scroll down a little bit. All right, this is the part where it gets first off, Jones says, Shoddy says, nah, individual one, he says, that's cool, now you're gonna get violated. <laughs> All right, Shadi said, yeah, super violated, super duper. Okay, I don't know, man. When I hear the word violated used by niggas, I'm thinking they finna get in that ass. But I think, like, what people have been saying is that means some way that they're going to inflict serious harm or kill Right, them. that's what I would, um, yeah, I wouldn't say that they are going to kill him. That sounds like I, some gang rape shit to me. Right, it sounds <laughs> it sound like, okay, that nigga, uh, we going to you know, get him under some charges or something. We gonna set that nigga up so that yeah. he don't, you know, it, it don't sound like kill because the way he's like super violated, like, yeah, we gonna violate him, super violate But then him. he said, ain't no much, ain't not much. So I'm trying to, I'm like trying to interpret, typo, you know, like uh, autocorrect this shit while I'm reading. But ain't no much he could really do unless he run around with 100 armed security all day. So it's clear the intentions are, they're trying to they're trying to evoke harm on him, okay? Right. So I don't then, think kill though. Well, because how do you see. super kill somebody? Like I, <laughs> I I just look at it like they just like okay. Well, we he don't... said violate, and then the other guy says super violate. So maybe violate means beat, and the other guy super violate. Maybe that means kill. I just think they mean like we gonna shake up your world. Like we mm-hmm. gonna like I mean he said that they gave out his mom's address. Yeah. You know, when they were, when he was on Breakfast Club and he said like that, like he and Rock with that. So maybe it's like a situation where they're going to try to go after his mom or his daughter, or baby mama, girlfriend, something, something like that. You know, something that's like really going to like, like super piss him off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's what he said. They did that. And then, uh, OK, here's where it is. Individual one says, and he ain't a gang member no more. And then Jones shoddy says, nah, he ain't nothing. Then individual one says, that's, that's what, that's what Shadi need to make sure he do. Yeah. And the individual one says, just tell that nigga he ain't gang no more, gang member no more. He kicked out the whip. He was never a gang member. Niggas, Shadi needs to expose him. So I think the lawyers can take that from the tap and possibly make an argument saying, hey, the gang that we're saying, the organization that we're bringing him down with, they're saying he was never a part of the organization. That doesn't mean that, they, you know, we've seen video of him doing nigga shit and all of that, but maybe he might not get the full it. charge. I don't, I mean, of course, his, without a doubt, his lawyers are going to try to use this and spin it as much as they can in his favor. Mm-hmm. However, like, the feds, when they go after you and they pick you up, they got a, a lot, like, racked up, and I, and I feel like, you know, in this case, any regular person can figure out, okay, he went and did this interview and dissed them. And that's why they saying you not a member no more. You ain't nothing. You, you know, it's, it's more so like now you've created beef with them. Not that you were never a part of it. Yeah. Because why would they even be talking about, they wouldn't even acknowledge you if you just some nigga like trying to false claim or something like yeah. that. But 
they obviously had a relationship established with you. You diss them, and they're mm-hmm. they're trying to make it like, you know, just trying to explain that like, nah, nigga, like you out. It's a wrap. Hold up, I just thought of something. Okay, I'm trying to read the last thing I read. He said. Oh, wait a minute. Individual one, I'm rereading it. He said, just tell that nigga he's not a gang member no more. Right. That's what he said. He said, you're right. not a gang member no more. I just missed that. So by no more, that implies that you, you were. were in the gang. Right. So, so, were you, so, so they shouldn't <laughs> use this because okay. it obviously states that, like, you know, but but that's that's what, you know, the prosecutor is going to say anyway, was that, mm-hmm. like, they're saying this because y'all beefed out. Like, you did a whole interview saying, like, dissing them the whole time. Of course, like, it's a gang. Like, mm-hmm. they don't take this as lightly. So, of course, they said all this, you know? So, either way, lock them up and throw away the key. Bang, Lord. it was a good run. I admit, <laughs> I admit, Danny, okay, you were very entertaining to the game. I have to admit. I don't care for him at all. <laughs> like, he just, he's, uh, uh. like, I mean, it's sad because he's such a young soul and has so much life mm-hmm. ahead of him, but at the same time, you, you know, you reap what you sow. I don't like, think I necessarily would say throw away up. the key. I feel that with these offenses, I hate that it's something he's doing at 19, give 20. Him like, give him like 10 years. Yeah, I think I, I'll even say 15. But 50 years, life, that just seems so much right, for somebody like so young. Right, he ain't the person that like originated all this. And he like, to like, our knowledge, he, he doesn't no have a body on him. nothing like that, you know. So like, yeah. let's just, you know, give him, give him enough time to where he'll come out and not even want to be a part of music, not want to do anything, just like want to live as a regular citizen because he's just been through too much, you know? Yeah. But hey, man. Straight them out. <laughs> Trey Way no more. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Um, Yo, Kevin Hart, Cowboys and Indians, you want to break that one down? Man, so <laughs> um, for all of our listeners, it is 2018, <laughs> and Kevin Hart and his wife, Aniko, decided to have a birthday party for their one-year-old. Birthday party was themed Cowboys and Indians. And it was on, uh, I don't know if the birthday was on Thanksgiving or right before Thanksgiving. So it was like even more offensive because of all that. So fuck out of here. Man, no, no, no. So this is the thing. This is the thing. So um, the issue is like, of course, social media is going to say something about it. You know, Native Americans have been boycotting at schools, like high schools, middle schools, and everybody that has a mascot of like Redskins or Indians or anything like that. The Redskins have been boycotting everything. Um, so like for me, when I saw it, I read the article and I kept it moving. Uh-huh. Like, you know, it's, it's another day in America. However, I think the... Um, the worst part about it was Kevin Hart's response. Oh yeah, hey Jack, you play the response. I think I sent you the sent you the clip. Yeah, or it should be next to it. it says Kevin Hart's uh, rep- uh, defense was put into perception from movie. Right. So what I'm saying, this isn't something that has just started. This isn't right. a racial Is that from the top? slur that that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's let Kevin break it down. There's a there's a lot of uh, flack. You know, I don't go on this shit. I don't read none of that. So she tells me, she's like, "Yo, go look at this dumb shit on uh, TMZ." You know, people are complaining. I got on TMZ. She goes, "People are complaining." Fox about uh about the Cowboys and Indian party saying that it's. Insensitive, mm-hmm. you know that <laughs> this is Pussy. a very insensitive thing. Okay, keep in mind the same day the uh, Cowboys, the Cowboys the played the Redskins on TV. Oh, right? <laughs> it's, very, it's, a, it's a very known fact: the Redskins and Cowboys played the right. same day. That's well, we, right. Now we the reason why I'm even bringing right, it. Let's stop it right here. But listen, listen. Let me fin- let me summarize what he said. So ahead, the base of what he's saying is like, okay, like fuck y'all, like this ain't no y'all just being sensitive. Um, he also saying. Um, when I was six, I played Cowboys and Indians in school all the time. I don't see what the problem is. And, like, y'all don't have a problem with um, the Redskins, which is a team in the NFL. Um, all of that is just pure ignorance. Mm-hmm. I don't care what – let me finish what I'm, I'm saying listening. before. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so – you know, it's just plain ignorance because, for one, they have been boycotting the Redskins and trying to get them to change their name. So mm-hmm. you sound stupid even saying, like, oh, wrong for that way. Y'all don't, Inaccurate. Y'all don't, you sound stupid. You sound ignorant. You sound uneducated. Like, you should have looked into all this before you opened your mouth and spoke. 
And before any of this, like, I feel like he should just never say nothing. Like, that would have been the best response was to just not say anything. But some, kid, some shit is just hard to ignore. Kid it's hard. Had, your kid had a great birthday party and keep it moving. And that's like, what it was about. Like, just, just don't, don't, just don't say anything. If you don't feel like it was insensitive, don't say anything. And, and not to say that it was right, but it, that would have been better than you opening your mouth and saying this dumb shit that you said. On top of that, then he's he's saying when I was six years old, I played Cowboys and Indian. Your kid is turning one. He also said he also mentioned cops and robbers. Okay, the game cop, cops and robbers, right? Would you let your kids play that? Cops and robbers is completely different. What if it was your kid's birthday party and it just so happened there were more white cops as far as the kids and there were mostly black robbers? It's completely different. How? Like when, because I'm that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Indians and cowboys, like Indians and cowboys is a racist like game like you're 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 separating a racial group and saying that other people like y'all are attacking each other like you're attacking two different races but you know what the difference is each other. you know what the difference is which is different from history the indians or the native americans can have a shot at winning Oh my that didn't God. happen Look, in history. You're talking about, okay. the, what you're talking about, cops and robbers, those are two different professions fighting. No, this is the point. Races. This is the point. First off, I got to get this off, man. Okay, to all you sensitive motherfuckers, man, who think that just because something can be interpreted as offensive, that doesn't mean you have to be offended. Okay? Like, these are kids. They don't give a fuck about... They don't know anything so about... So why pick a theme? I'm saying like, they don't... I don't no, like, the, you can have an Elmo theme. The kid is turning one. So what he said about I played when I was six years old, your kid is one. Your this six, is what kids look your at. Your kid don't know what the difference of a damn cowboy and an Indian is. These are what is. kids see. They don't see Indians or cow... What they see is these interesting looking costumes that I want to play dress up with. They see the cop wearing a uniform and a gun. You cannot They tell want me. that. They see a cowboy wearing you boots and a cowboy hat his, and a gun. You cannot tell they me that he that. took his one-year-old into a costume store and the one-year-old was drawn to the Cowboys Pro- and Indians. Probably not. You know what? And he said he played it when he was a kid. He probably wanted to so share... So in other words, you forced this agenda down your child's birthday party. You no, in other, words, in other words, in other words, I see... I see this theme on it. I see a father who probably reflected or recalling a, a, a great experience that he had when he was a child and he wanted to pass that on to his son. And then you have all these sensitive but motherfuckers it's like, like oh, we talked about, that's offensive. It's like what we talked about before when we said Wayne had a lot of bars that are like, when you think about it, it's like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. But it was like a different time. So mm-hmm. just like when Kevin Hart was six, that man is 40-something now. Mm-hmm. It's a different time. Like, so you can't <sighs> sit up here and like, just hide and go get it. That was sexual harassment. It really was. <laughs> it was sexual assault on kids. But, but wait, everybody wait, 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 played wait, wait, it when we were little. But wouldn't all the players have consented? Yeah. I mean, yeah, but I ain't gonna but, get it. Everybody but, consented. But that's though. what I'm saying. Like it, it was an inappropriate sexual activity, but it was it a was. different time. It was more accepted. Now, if your if you found out your daughter was playing the hide and go get it, you would be pissed off. I'll beat her ass. But if all the kids know the rules and they're playing, essentially they're consenting. Yeah, but at the same time, like as far as now, if a thirty-year-old man jumped into as far as go get it, that's a whole different story. As far as these cowboys and Indians, I just, I just thought that that was like it was insensitive. On top of the fact that it's around Thanksgiving and it's around Thanksgiving. Had he did this shit in March, it would have been he can't help when his kid were born. It would have been a lot less. His son wasn't born in March. He could have gave his other son a cowboys and Indian theme. Like that would have made more sense than having a one-year-old. For me, if I was one years old and I look back. Daddy, what the hell was y'all thinking? I probably wanted Aunt Elmo mm-hmm. or something like that. I want, probably want some Sesame Street, some Barney, some, uh, what is it, Peppa the Pig. <laughs> I probably wanted some shit like that. Not no damn Cowboys and Indians at one year old. Like I said, kids just see the costumes. They see the uniforms. I'm like, I don't want to look kids like that. that young are drawn to bright colors, fun shit. They're not drawn to no Indian feathers or nothing like that. They are drawn to Peppa the Pig, her pink ass. Mm-hmm. They drawn to Blue's Clues, blue ass. Like They, they want the vibrant <laughs> stuff. So, like I said, you he can't tell me that his one year old walk in the costume store and was like, "Ooh, I want to be a." a Here's Indian. thing. What if these games I think can be used in an educational way? How about we reenact cowboys and Indians and use this shit to teach the kids what happened in history? What's wrong with that? You can even do niggas and colonizers. You can do. You could play privilege. The video. You could play privilege. The simulation privilege and, and black privilege and minorities. Because the the difference is at one years old, you're not gonna be able to comprehend 
why this happened. You're just going to remember. It's going to be ingrained when you reenact that for your child uh-huh. at one years old and continue to do so for the next six birthdays. It's going to be ingrained in them that this is how you as a cowboy treat Indians. This is how Indians get treated by cowboys. It's not going to be like an educational thing like you're thinking. Mm-hmm. It's going to like, it's just like white people when they grow up with a, around racist people, like, you know, and they, the whole family calling everybody a nigger uh-huh. or calling black people niggers, niggers, niggers. Yeah. And then like you don't grow up being educated like, oh, and this is why we don't call them niggers. You grow up thinking like, oh, we call them niggers. Yeah. So like, no, you your plan is going to backfire. I play cowboys and Indians. I play cops and robbers. And somehow I didn't get shit confused as I grow up. I think when you grow up, naturally, your framework develops and you're able to put things into concept. Moral of the story is, <laughs> moral of the story is moral Kevin of the Hart. Story- Kevin Hart, who is getting white people checks out here, uh-huh. who is doing a lot of family films, should just kept his damn mouth shut. I don't argue with you there. This was a bad PR move, Kev. This was a very Horrible. bad, very, very no, bad PR move. He, he ain't talked to no PR. He just woke <laughs> up and I, I'm going to talk about this shit. Like, y'all y'all getting me cussed out and everything else at home. I'm going to talk about this. When in actuality, mm-hmm. y'all should have had a regular ass one-year-old party with fucking uh, Bob the Builder, Pepper the Pig, Blues Clues, somebody like that. Like, you ain't have to sit there and make it Cowboys and Indians on Thanksgiving. That was just absurd. <laughs> It was absurd. It was offensive <laughs> given the holiday. And, and that's like having a Holocaust on like Christmas or something like that. Like we got a Holocaust themed party. Like what no, like we ain't got time for that. Like Would you put would you allow a video game blacks versus KKK? No. But give the blacks guns? No. Why would I? That's still promoting violence against people. Regardless, you can educate your kid without having them. That's like Grand Theft Auto. We can like, play, let me teach you how to survive can, in the hood. So let's play, play this game. Let's play Panthers. Just Panthers and supremacists. <laughs> I'm interested to see when you have some kids. What the hell they? Grow it's gonna up be like. lit. Anyway, right. speaking of uh, raising people to be murderers, mm. um, there's Rich. a man that has admitted to killing over 90 people. Mm. And he got away with most of them. So, um, you want to talk about it? Shoot, just like Cosby, okay? Nigga got away with it. Were you like almost 80 and you didn't get caught? You lived a whole ass life. But anyway, there's this man, okay? He got, His name is uh, 78-year-old Samuel Little, okay? And spending the rest of his life in prison after being convicted of killing three people. But after his name popped up, wait, wait. Uh-huh. he's serving three life sentences. <laughs> Come on, man. I felt that was funny and interesting. <laughs> this is like, y'all just gonna keep his body in a cell? <laughs> like, what do y'all do? Come like, on, man. <laughs> y'all just never bury his bones when he died? Yeah. But apparently, man, this man, he was in Odessa, Texas, all right? But he operated all across the country. But it turns out he confessed to being connected to over 90 murders across the country. A lot of it due to drugs, you know, nigga shit. Because at first, I need to know the context of it. It was a lot of women. A lot of women. I saw that. Because niggas ain't shit. See, yeah, but I, because I, I saw an old black man admitting to murder. And first thing I wanted to see was, was this any bit racial related, okay? Now, if he was killing a bunch of racist ass white folks, because, you know, bl- black people, <laughs> old black men, somebody said this, they're the most racist. And they have a right to be because they got it the worst during yeah. the civil rights era. So I was like, if it was in that case, I would have sympathy. If it was um, white men, he would not have gotten <laughs> away with all these. Nah. But the fact is, this motherfucker uh, sold girls, sex crime. I mean, yeah, sex. Uh, uh, what was yeah, it? it was mostly um, sex workers yeah. and prostitutes. And, and, and he gave like an accurate account. Like he would tell like what city, how many, you know, how many people he killed in each city and mm-hmm. like describe like the situation what car he was driving all that type of shit i was like this is sick mf so my point man why waste time just shut off the lights on this nigga okay he's fucking trash i would give him the death penalty why not i i'm because with you why, why are we waiting for him to die like thank you i mean now that he's like already serving three life sentences for killing people but then now you admitting like it's kind of like you bragging and i don't like how articles be writing stuff because like Sometimes when I read stuff, I'll be like, damn, like if I was a sick person, this would seem like a challenge, you mm-hmm. know, because they're like, um, he's the most, um, dang, what was it called? Oh, what did they say? The most, uh, 
prolific serial killer in the U.S. history if convicted. Mm. And I'm like, see, like if you if you somebody out here already murdering people, you like I'm looking at that as a challenge because this nigga going down in the books. You completely right. There are psychopaths out here who want that. that, They want that credit. I hate how they give like titles on that. Like this is not Ripley's Believe It or Not. You know what though? Maybe it's not such a bad thing. Think about or, it. Uh, the the um, Guinness Book of World Records. Like, don't what? don't do that. Well, here's the thing: if he does go down as the most prolific serial killer, then I think black people, minorities, we can't constantly say that. I mean, yeah, white people still are white men are the majority of serial killers. But if the, if the title is owned by a black man, oh my God. Ah, that kind of that's kind of a bad look. So maybe if we did have a Billy. I yeah, just maybe two more. Just maybe two more extra. 92. What? Shut up. What? <laughs> what is wrong with your ass? What is wrong with you? No, don't nobody need to have that title. They just should have never, like, that should be a, a title that's only kept in, like, records of, like, the professionals. Like, it shouldn't be, like, released in press, like, in, in written form or mm-hmm. on TV or anything like that. Because I, I feel like sick people look at that as, like, a challenge. They do. Because, like, just think about back in the day when people was, like, you know, crazy white men were killing a bunch of women. And it was, like, we found seven bodies all buried together. Then all of a sudden you find somebody that got ten bodies all buried together. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, like, people just, like, no, I want to be, I want to have a star off of this. You know, I want to be exact, famous off of this. That's the same argument that I keep making with... Uh, advertising mass shootings, okay? When we're constantly seeing mass shootings clips being played on TV, right. on, on social media, guess what? A week later or four days later, another shooting. Right. Okay, how many, we've had the most school shootings ever in like the past year or so, the past or year maybe and a they half. Could, I mean, because we can't just not report them because people need to be aware of what's going on, but maybe they can just like not say how many people were injured or, or killed or anything. I maybe say they keep just... the shit on lock. Okay, only the community should be aware. So we just go around acting like everything's all dandy? I mean, only the community would know and that would affect them. But yeah, I see keep the shit under wraps because you wouldn't have all these kids. I my argument, my thesis is I don't think we would have all these kids being feeling thinking they're depressed and wanting to kill themselves if they didn't see other other depressed kids. Doing it for attention, or I mean, well, doing it and yeah, be getting and getting remembered saying, for it. Like either way, it makes an impression on you in some form. A lot of but, them want to be but remembered. Like I, said, I feel like you know we still need to be aware. I just feel like details need to be like under wraps or something. Like even like like how people like shoot up churches and stuff. I think they should just say like you know in a building, like there was a mass shooting in a building. Because I feel like people are like oh somebody shot up a church. Like well, let me go find a church to shoot up. You no, know, I think just simply mentioning it that there was a mass shooting and we talk about it for weeks. That gives people like, hey, I want to be talked about for weeks. I, feel I want like, people to remember me. My life like is they, bullshit. They should just be like, there was a shooting on the block of block of uh, blah 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 and blah blah blah, and uh, more details to come. They just like never have any more details. You need to just stay local news. Just local. <laughs> just keep it local. And if those people put it out, it comes out. But I don't think we should just be pumping the shit mass wide because it's like monkey see, monkey do. Well, speaking of prison, and everything. Some mm-hmm. of the most random ass shit has like made national headlines and everything. And I'm embarrassed to say that it's right here in Texas. Yeah. Right here in uh Tarrant County. And it's crazy because like it could have been anybody. Yeah. So um well, thirty well not really anybody, but well. you know. So um Rosa Maria or Ortega, um she's a thirty nine year old woman, a uh, mother of four. She was convicted of eight years in prison for illegally voting. Mm -hmm. Now, the issue with this is like the the fucked up part about this is for one, she voted in Tarrant County. That's where I vote. Mm -hmm. That's where I vote, too. I was like, dang, like this is like crazy. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, also she worked as a poll worker, like volunteer this past election. Yeah, you got to elaborate. You're a you know, poll worker. People might get the wrong. She, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> she was a volunteer at the voting polls um, this past election. And um, basically they got her for illegal voting. And this was actually like her, fir- her fourth time voting. Um, so she's she has a green card. And on her green card, she didn't know that it was illegal for her to vote because it says resident on there. It says mm-hmm. something like... Um, it says she was a permanent resident. Right. So for her, she translated that as to like she could vote because it says a permanent resident. Like yeah. I would assume the same thing. Mm-hmm. So she's been voting in all these elections and she actually voted for the... Um, what was it? The 
the the person that prosecuted her, mm-hmm. she voted him into office. Like she voted for him. Mm. So it was just like really Damn. like a messed up ass like situation. But um yeah, like how did how do you feel about that? Come on, man. Like at first, like when I read it on Instagram, I didn't get the full story. Right. You know, I that's the thing about Insta Insta news. I feel like there's just not enough information. Yeah, you they, know? they look for the keywords. The, yeah. The, um, what I'm sure there's a term for it in marketing, but mm. you know the, the words that'll words, get you the right trigger word. Loaded language. Yeah. So like when I was looking at it, I you know the way I think of things, the way I process information is. This shit can't be as crazy as it sounds. All right. So I do a little research and I look it up and you know what? It is as crazy as it sounds. Yeah. Okay. This woman, she like, you know, the, the lawyer was making, hey, she had a sixth grade education, you know? And even then, that's not an excuse. Hell, you even me, I did I probably wouldn't know the difference between permanent resident and Bro. I, I, how do you know the distinction between I don't the two? know. There, you, know, you know how many forms I done messed up because I don't know the difference between first name and last name? Mm-hmm. Because if they switch them and you got to put your last name first, but you write your first name, you got to have a whole... And I have a college degree. So that doesn't happen to me plenty of times. So it's just a, you know, like sometimes you're just oblivious to things or you just misinterpret things. I'll be standing, I'll be trying to park. I'm looking at the parking signs for like 10 minutes trying to figure out... So no parking here from seven to eleven, but you can park here from six to eleven. But <laughs> like you know, like it's and a imagine lot of reading com- that you barely know English, right? <laughs> so it's a lot of stuff that can be misinterpreted in this world, and for her to be punished for, it, and it's like she was a volunteer at a voting location. I am a U.S. born citizen mm. and have never done that. So this woman is more than doing her part, you know, like trying to make sure, like you know, I want to be somebody in this world like i want to be just like everybody else in this country i came over here for something i'm over here to do it let me you know fulfill my duties as best i can mm-hmm. and she don't have no prior record or incidents or anything but then y'all sentenced her to eight years for voting yeah because i thought there was more i thought maybe she illegally like like hacked the system put in a bunch of fake votes some shit but no nah, it's just crazy as it sounds eight years <laughs> nah man for, if for anything voter like, fraud. if you gotta charge anything give her a fine and let her go home call it a day Okay, she should not serve any time for this. Right, that is harsh. Eight years, in or just prison? don't have her votes count. Like, I mean, like she's voted for four different elections, so just take her votes out and leave it at that. Like, and and just find her and you know give her a slap on the wrist. Say, hey, like you you can't vote. Although it says permanent resident, you are not actually a permanent resident that can vote. So like, just don't vote from this moment forward. But to send her to eight years after like. I don't even know people that have volunteered at voting locations. Mm-hmm. Like, so the fact that she did it is like, well, damn, like I ain't doing my due diligence as a citizen of the United States. Yeah. And she out here, you know, showing, showing up and showing out. And y'all just want to like, that sends a wrong message. Cause, and, I, and I think that's what they were trying to do. Exactly. I was just about to say, there's definitely an agenda at work here. Right. Because if you have this, you know, woman who can barely read and write and everything. And then she can also, you know, has a hard time with understanding language and everything. And she got sent to say years. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? If I'm anywhere near fitting that description where maybe I don't understand English that well, I'm not even going to attempt to go to the polls. Yeah. Because I don't want to be the next one convicted. Like that, that's crazy. That's messed Fuck up. That. So no. like, I, I'm just hoping like, you know, her lawyer can like, do something to get her out or like Eight take this years. up to like you know a higher court or something like that because you know the language was confusing let me see if i can um i know it was in this article i want to see if i could find it again because it was like when i saw it i was like well shit i wouldn't know the difference either yeah it was like legal uh permanent resident something like that Right. And it said, um, you know, it was funny because she can own property. She can serve in the military. She can get a job. She can pay taxes, but she can't vote. Fuck that. Like, why would I be paying taxes if I can't vote? So you could fight and die for our country, but you can't vote. Right. Um, Yeah. So basically, um, she said she didn't know the difference between a U.S. citizen and a legal permanent resident. (laughs) Legal permanent resident. But wow. as a U.S. citizen, you are a legal permanent resident. But as a legal permanent resident, you're not a U.S. citizen. I think that's like the, it's almost like, it's almost paralleled with, you know, like your partner, your your spouse, you know, husband and wife or domestic partner. I think it's like when it, it's like the, the wording is just so, they're so similar, but completely different. 
in the eyes of the law. They they wrong for this, and they are trying to they're trying to scare the you know the Spanish speaking community out of voting and out of showing up and doing stuff because like I'm sure you know this went viral in their communities because it's one of their own, mm-hmm. you know just like anything about a black person go viral in ours, but you know like to me I'd be scared to do anything like I I probably would just like give up on voting altogether just oh, in case shit. like just because you don't want to like she has four kids. Like, four kids, Mm -hmm. and their mom is going to jail for voting. Like, she didn't rob nobody. She got eight years. Whoa, whoa. she got freaking eight years, and there's a police officer that got sentenced to three years. Three fucking years. And and he set up black people. Like, he was a police officer that was just, like, setting up black people to get arrested and everything else. Mm -hmm. And he got three years. But this woman illegally voted and got eight years. You already know the game, though. That's crazy. It's it's fucked up. That's crazy. Yeah, I would look Hispanics. Fuck this shit. I wouldn't vote. I understand you want to get Trump out this motherfucker. I totally get it. I wouldn't risk it. I would. I personally would not risk it. I, I just say if you have a green card, just don't vote. But if you have anything, I don't even know what other options there are. I think it's just either you have a green card or you are actually like an actual resident. You get a green card if you mm. marry somebody, right? Yeah, you do. But okay, so if you have a green card, just don't vote. The, that's that's the only this solution. Is, this I have. is the only. Uh, this is the only excuse I would take for people saying they don't vote. This is the only woke reason right, I would right, say right. not to vote. Because this this, right here. it's actually illegal, clearly. Yeah. But I'm just like that's messed up. Like, I. Yeah, oh, man. So speaking of Mexicans, man, the U.S. border. All right, like the, the caravan. Now this story right here kind of. I'll, I'll just say, okay, I'll just read it. LGBT members of a caravan of Central American mi- uh, migrants heading for the U.S. border appear to have reached California border after leaving the main group behind over alleged discrimination from other migrants. Okay. <laughs> okay, man, no. I, 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 I don't know if I'm going to get slandered for, for, for finding this funny, but here's my deal, man. Because uh, apparently there's a lot of, there's a transgender yeah, transgender, trans community, okay, of people that are trying to board the caravan, but they're getting, you know, they're, they're, they're facing discrimination and possible, you know, all kinds of shit that's preventing them from getting on the caravan, whatever, right? So the caravan is what? Huh? That's what's bringing, like, a lot of people are hopping on this, like, when I get it, when I'm getting oh, it. Oh, so it's just a form of transportation to get across the border. Yeah. Okay, and so th- the basis of the story is they're not letting trans people get on the caravan yeah and they're leaving them behind well they're facing discrimination it went on there like they're getting abused verbally they're getting the you know you see the problem here i see the problem but it's also like well we kind of in the same boat i'm like nigga okay i don't give a fuck what you identify as do you want to get the fuck out of where it is that you're trying to get out of? Like, right? Ah. It's like if you trying to get away from your country because it ain't nothing there for you. What what gives you the right? Like, if you in the same situation as mm-hmm. me, like we both just trying to make it. Yeah. What gives you the right to then discriminate against somebody because of their like sexual orientation or what they do with themselves? So so they're with the shit, and because I'm looking at it as if I'm trying to get out of some place, right? In my way, like let's say North Korea or whatever, right? And I have some white guys, racist white guys who are giving me a ride. Of course, I paid them, okay? Right. And they're calling us niggas along the way. Sometimes, man, you just got to just take that shit on the chin if it's going to get you where you need to go for freedom. I can see that. <laughs> but hey, they're with the shit. So what they're doing is they're saying that the trans community are banding together. The trans, uh, you know, migrants. Okay, they're banding together. And they're trying to pass because, you know, do you know about the asylum thing? Basically, asylum, it grants privilege, it allows certain undocumented immigrants into the country if they fit the, if they fit the criteria of, um, basically, it's not safe for them to be in their country for who they gotcha. are due to race, religion, gotcha. blah, blah, okay. blah. So they're trying to band together to get, to get, allow asylum for all these people because of their uh, transgender. Yeah. Now, y'all. My LGBT listeners, okay, I I, I, lo- I love y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say I don't know y'all, but I have nothing against y'all. I have no hate against y'all for what y'all do. Yikes. Okay, and granted, <laughs> it's gonna be I grew. This bad that I you grew. Have to do this you, apology. You, you gotta, I'm, no, it's no apology. 
Let's look at that. Right, I'm not apologizing. This, I'm prefacing. <laughs> okay. I have no ill feelings towards that, any um... orientation. <laughs> I grew up in the 90s and early 2000s, okay? Where my mom, where my parents, I grew up around the word punk, sissy, and all that shit, okay? But I have no ill feelings towards any group of people. With that said, excuse my rhetoric if I am not up to date with today's standards, this okay? This is that, no offense, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a question. Is it at all possible for the transgender, trans individuals, I don't know, to kind of be low key about this shit until they get off the damn caravan, or until they cross the border? Is it possible to be low key about your shit until you cross over? That's a good question. <laughs> you know, like, like I mean, yeah, like I would never encourage somebody to stop being who they are, but at the same time, like, you gotta kind of like do what you gotta do because I mean, if you think about like just back in slave times, like. We moved at night because why? Because we was black. Yeah. Like you had no choice. You couldn't move around in daylight trying to get away from slavery. Exactly. You had to move around at night and you had to look for the safe house and you had to do this and that. And you weren't necessarily always trusting of all the white people. Yeah. But you just had to like hope and, you know, have hope and faith that this this white person wasn't going to try to turn you in or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you you did what you had to do to get where you wanted to be. Yeah. And I mean, same thing in, in this day and age with black people and chucking and jiving at work. We, we, <laughs> we take it on the chin with white people saying, what's up, bro? Yeah. What's up, bro? Like, so, hey, sis, like, oh, your hair. And then touching your hair without, you know, asking and stuff. And you just put up with that. And listen until, here, I'm not, I don't want to put the message out like, hey, you just got to let all people shit on you for who you are. That's not the message I want to put out. But I will say I'm thinking about the long term game. Okay, I'm thinking about the I'm thinking about playing it long term. And I don't know. Maybe what I'm saying is not possible. Somewhat. Let me know if that's not possible. So but transgender I'm just means it's like women, men that have transformed into women, right? Yes, and vice versa, essentially. Or trans uh, transitioning is the word that they use. Transitioning. So a man that transitioned into a woman, a woman that transitioned into a man. I was gonna say my no, <laughs> say so what? my no offense, but mm -hmm. it's like so like how do these people know that you're trans? Like is it just you, is it just that well no, no offense, but is it just that you're not like fully the part? Of, if you're a man turning into a woman, are you not fully looking the part? I'm looking at this picture. I don't know Jedi has the list, but uh, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, some of these motherfuckers is obvious, you know. And no disrespect, okay. But I'm just saying, I've seen other trans do a much better job, <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> I mean, have you seen T.S. Yeah. Madison? Nah. Do you, you, oh, my I God. do know, uh, what's his name? What's her name? Uh, has look the blog. Up, uh, look up T.S. Madison, Madison on Pornhub. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I haven't seen oh, it. Man. But my friend told me about it. She told me that. So T.S. Madison. Actually, let me Google a picture for you so you can put a face with uh, but you know who's who's the tra you know the trans uh trans what you call the trans uh what's her name janet mock you know janet mock no but there was another one uh wh who was the one the infamous one that everybody was like used to talk about because she looks really good probably janet mock no it's not it's not her it's um i can't think of the name i have to like google like famous Right here. Transgenders or something. That's a yeah. Uh -huh. That's she's trans. Uh -huh. Yeah, yo, uh, and Nana, I so put Nana on T.S. Madison. Yikes! <laughs> yo, man, would you I, would you think it's a man? No, not at all. Or not? I'm sorry, not it. I think I, she. I, think I get she what you. Yeah, I get what you're trying to say. She identifies as a she, but would I think that that used to be a man? No. Yeah. I wouldn't. Um, yeah, and apparently she has a huge penis. Damn. <laughs> hey, yo, that's my thing too, man. Are you? I respect the trans that go all the way and cut their dick off. You know, because it's like that's a commitment. Don't say that. That's a commitment. I don't, uh, you know, like that. That's a hell of a commitment when you go that far. But if you still got a dick, I think you didn't. You, you didn't quite go all the way. You can still go go the other go back to the other side if you wanted to. But yo, I'm not gonna lie, man. A lot of niggas would definitely 
she, a lot of niggas would get in Jen and Mark's guts if they didn't know that that was, that she used to be a man. And a lot of guys would get in. T.S. Well, Madison? We'll let T.S. Madison get in Hell yeah. their guts. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't know. But, uh, I just, you know, I mean, it's sad that we even have to say this, you know, mm-hmm. that, that we're like looking for solutions of these people to not be discriminated against. It's either one, you, you take it on the chin and just let it be, you know, let it be what it is. But I'm sure that's what they do on a, on a daily basis anyway. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is like an extreme since they're on like this this form of transportation together and it's yeah. like somebody constantly 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 like you know if you walk down the street you eventually walk past the person and they mm-hmm. can't say anything else you can't hear them anymore yeah but if you sit next to them for like a seven eight hour drive or something like mm-hmm. you probably do get fed up you probably do get like pissed off and want to punch somebody in the face or you know a fight break out y'all got pull over and everything else mm. um i don't know like i is i i hate to say this but it either like look the complete part, like, you know, like T.S. Madison and stuff, yeah. like, she looks like a full-blown woman. Yeah. So just look but like a woman and don't an say nothing. They're coming from or, an impoverished, you know, community. Like, you know, right, they don't, so have, they the don't have the resources to do all that. It's just unfortunate that people are just like, no matter what economic, you know, situation they're in or what they're running from, they still feel like they have to have one up on somebody mm-hmm. else. And it, it's just messed up. But the big question is they're trying to qualify for asylum and the requirement is they have to prove their their status. That's the terminology they're using. They have to prove, basically approve their transgender status. Or prove their LGBT status. Right. How the fuck do you prove that? Do you, like what, do you, right. how do dude, you prove do you, that? Do you, if you suck you dick on the spot? I mean, like, how do you, how do you prove that? I'm just saying, like. How do you prove it when you don't have, like, the resource? Like, let's say, it's a man that's transformed into a woman, but he hasn't had a boob job yet. Mm-hmm. Or like, or even then, like, are you really exposing your private parts to prove that? Like, yeah, that's inhuman. Now that's inhumane. It really uh, is. Man, this world is just like jacked up. Like, so um, yeah. If somebody has more information about you know the caravan and how you know you're supposed to prove your status, yo, definitely hit us up. Let me know. I would love to like speak with somebody who has like come from like an impoverished community like that and like to know their experience and if it's a different experience there than it is here in America Mm -hmm. because I feel like even in America I mean there was like there was a period where it was a lot of transgender black um, women in Atlanta that were getting murdered Mm -hmm. not even off the you know everybody assume oh it's because you end up not telling this nigga that you were transgender it was like you living your life and somebody come and stab you yeah like type of deal how do you feel about that though like not not the not the you just living your like, life and somebody stab you. Okay, that's obvious. Obviously, that's I'm fucked like, up. What? Okay, obviously that's fucked up. But I mean, the first point you made. Do you think transgender should disclose? We had that. Me and Nana had that conversation, but I don't know your take. Um, disclose for what? I don't. I feel like you don't have to disclose unless you' about to disclose your clothing. So if like a, so if you are if you are a trans man. No, if you are a trans female, meaning that you're a man transitioning into a woman, okay, you look like a woman and a dude at the club or whatever come up and holler at you, should that person, that trans person, disclose? No. Why not? Because I look at it, and and I don't mean any offense by this, but I look at um, the things that a lot of people don't disclose when you first meet somebody. Uh-huh. You may not disclose that you have kids or you may not disclose that you are unemployed. You may not disclose that you have like a permanent STD or something like that. You should. Before y'all not get intimate, you, you first, should. No, no, no. You, you definitely should if you're going to get intimate with this person. But when you are meeting somebody, like I can't tell you how many people I've met and it, and it goes nowhere. Like it don't even make it to a first date or us hanging out or anything. People so should it's like, disclose if they have kids right off the bat. I disagree with that. Listen, they should, uh-huh. they should, but it's a lot of people that don't, Yeah, especially if you have a lot of kids or if you have like four kids and four baby mamas. Mm-hmm. Like I, I actually dated a guy. He actually called me on Thanksgiving and I ain't talked to him in like three years. So I was like, nigga, mm-hmm. what? Like, who is this? <laughs> and, um, yeah, when I first met him, he told, he told me he had two kids he, and they were twins mm-hmm. and they lived in different States. So I was just like, that's not bad. You know, I can deal with that, you know? Yeah. But, um, as time went on, he told me about another kid. And I was like, okay. And the only reason he told me about that is because like he w- would go missing at certain times of the day. It was because he was picking her up from school and hanging mm-hmm. out with her. <laughs> um, and then I found out about another kid on Facebook. 
So not like they none, none of them were fresh babies or anything like that, but it was like, okay, if you getting tagged in Facebook on pictures, like you're obviously the father. Yeah. So <laughs> like and, and the kid looks like you, you're obviously the father. You probably say I'm just ba- I'm the girl ain't got the weekend. same last name as you, so it ain't your sister, so they they ain't your niece and nephew. So you sound like one of them niggas that say I'm babysitting when he's looking after his kids. Right. <laughs> so like yeah, after after I found out about the last one, I was like, nah, I, like, are you kidding me? So now, I t- but I, some people will do that to like because they know you're not gonna give them a chance if you if I, if you come up to me and I'm a successful person, no kids, job, and you know I got everything lined up mm-hmm. and I'm doing fine just by myself, and you come into the table, you, you know you can't come to the table with certain stuff that I'm not gonna deal with. Like I'm not gonna, I'll, I'll date a person with kids, but I'm not gonna date somebody with four kids mm-hmm. because like that's just a lot for me. Like maybe you could talk to we can revisit this conversation when I'm like 40 or something. Or like thirty or something, when mm-hmm. I'm, you know, when I'm changing my outlook and my views, and maybe if I want to have kids of my own or not, but I'm not gonna give you your fifth child. Yeah, I mean, I feel you, but as far as the trans thing, you're saying they oh, should yeah. not disclose. <laughs> yeah, you gotta got yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I feel like they shouldn't disclose right off the bat because it ain't nobody business. It like, is me, I- if you are romantic. Oh. If, if I take a romantic interest in you. You should let me know right off the bat. I look at it like this, okay? It's, I used this analogy before, right? When I was younger, when I used to go to parties that mama dragged me to, right? And you see the salad bar. I used to think those little tomatoes were cherries. I fucking hate, but you know, I hate tomatoes. I love cherries, okay? When I bite into that tomato, I'm pissed because it's not a cherry. But how this relates to my point. If I know in advance what your you know what your 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 sexual your sexuality is i'm not no hate against you I'm not but saying that, that is that not what i'm to, into that's not what i'm into i want to know in advance bro, you should let me I'm know not, before i get into it i'm not saying that you have to hide who you are but i'm saying that there's like a level of intimacy that you have and i don't mean sex i uh-huh. mean a level of intimacy a level of getting to know someone before you discuss those topics because you have to also remember these are people that are in danger just for being who they are mm-hmm. so like if you meet a hood ass nigga who's showing interest in you and he you know and you right off the bat as soon as he come up to you like oh let me get your number like oh i'm i'm trans he might take it the wrong way or like get offended or get like buck with you or like have somebody waiting outside the club to beat you up because you try to like trick him or whatever. And that is fucked so, up. So so like that's what I'm saying. They're living in dangerous times. So that's why I'm saying not right off the bat. Now if if you're gonna be intimate with someone, if y'all are going on a date and y'all about to head, he talking about oh well I'm gonna get us a hotel room. That's the perfect time to disclose, disclose that to somebody. And some don't. A lot of tra- I'm like, no, no, I'm not gonna say that. I was gonna no, say- we can't sit up here yeah. and say that. There's no statistics on no, how. No, no, many- you're right. I, no, I was gonna, I was, I was gonna take that back. That was, that was an incomplete thought. I was about, to, I almost said a lot of trans think no, they don't. But I have read several articles of people who argue that even during sex, it's still none of your business to disclose. And that's where I disagree. I draw the fucking line. I mean, I already drew the line. Like, I feel like you should disclose right I off mean, the bat. I mean, but then there are a lot of people that use that as a cover up too. Like a lot of men that are actually interested in trans women, mm-hmm. and then they are they come back. You know, when the story get on, you know, come big and they embarrassed and everything. They're like, I never, you didn't disclose to me. And then the argument is, oh well, you were attracted to me, so it wasn't a problem. Okay, well, there's a bunch of you know bad chicks at the club that probably got herpes. I don't right. want that. I don't want that shit. But it's you know, but, still, but I still you, attracted to you. Do you realistically expect you to walk up to that girl and be like, "Dang, you fine? Like, let me get your number. I want to take you out." And her to be like, "Oh, by the way, I got herpes." I would respect the fuck out of her if she did. But you might respect that. But at the same time, that is somebody's personal business that should not be. Because think about you might respect it and not tell nobody else, not tell nobody her business, and, mm-hmm. and keep it moving. Yeah. But somebody else might. Go it might be like, oh, okay, like cool, and then go back up to their homeboy. Yeah, so and so, that girl over there I was trying to talk to, she got herpes. Now you you dealing with and then what do you do? Imagine what's going on through your head when you found out that a person that you just slept with actually has a disease. No, that, we're not an talking incurable about, disease. No, 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 we're not talking about sleeping. I'm talking about just in the club. You approaching a woman, she uh-huh. she told you she has herpes, but you that type of nigga that not not you personally, but mm-hmm. let's say she she told this to a guy. And he's the type of nigga that go back to his homeboys and be like, yeah, they're like, oh, bro, you get her number? Nah, bro, she got herpes. Now all these unnecessary ass niggas know this. And every time they see her at the club, they finna be telling everybody else, yeah, that's the girl, she got herpes. Like, you know, Wait, did, they already, did they already know she had herpes? 
But I'm saying when she told the guy that approached her. Oh, in my example. He goes back to. Yes, friend. my example is oh, that okay. she, like you said, disclosed immediately, mm -hmm. and now you dealing with public shame and humiliation over something that you probably have already dealt with, and probably have already worked your way through, and probably you know already had your own emotional issues about it, and now you got niggas over here looking at you sideways because somebody told your business because you told them in the two seconds that they didn't need to know. That's why I said there needs to be an app. Like a dating app oh, just for people who have an STD, like herpes. One of the big three. What? Oh, my God. One? You're like, is that a bad idea? But, but, <laughs> but what I'm saying is that these people, anybody should be able to go out and have a good time and mind their business. You don't have to disclose that you, I, like, if I'm celibate, I don't have to, like, as soon as a guy walk up to me, be like, yeah, I'm celibate. I, I don't have to do that. That's not your business. We not about to fuck right here in this club, so it ain't your business. But what I'm saying is there is, you know, you you can establish just like on the old TV shows. Like, I don't know if you watched the Eve uh, TV show. Remember when she had the... Um, the Eve? Yeah, when she her character was Shelly. Oh, I didn't she watch had that. The, oh. Yeah, so um, I think it was there with some, any, some, some TV show. Mm -hmm. They had a character that had um, AIDS or HIV. Uh -huh. And so she didn't disclose it to the guy that she was dating until like it got to the point where he wanted to be intimate. Then she opened up to him and told him. And he appreciated them because it wasn't like their clothes were off or anything. Mm -hmm. It was like, no, like, let me stop you. Let me explain what's going on. Yeah. You obviously liked me for me. So now I'm open enough to tell you everything that I come with instead of like telling somebody who don't need to know because it's not for everybody to know in my opinion mm -hmm. and you shouldn't have to go walk around with like a scarlet letter because you have herpes or because you're transgender or because you're celibate or because you have five kids and five baby mamas like you you know like i think that those are <laughs> i think that i think uh, i think all of those things could be just closed no, I believe they all can be disclosed, like, but leave it up to people to decide when they're going to disclose it. Now, if you wait till after you done had sex with somebody to tell them that you have a disease or something, guess what? That is illegal. You have exposed somebody to something, you're going to jail. Yeah, and I look at it the same way if you have sex with somebody and then they reveal to you that they used to be a man, if you're a guy. And they reveal to you, you they used to be a man, and that's not what you're into. So if so if it was a trans woman that has completely transformed, uh -huh. like has no signs or symptoms of being a man at all, mm -hmm. she has to still tell you that she used to be a man? Absolutely. Absolutely. But these are people that felt like they have been women their whole life and were born with the wrong type of gender. So do you understand how like emotionally like damaging that is for them? Because now I have completely transformed into the person that I'm most comfortable being the person that I believe myself to have been this whole time. I, but you still want me to disclose. To I, you. I completely stand by that. I mean, I so support wanna, that. I support that plight. I really do. But you know what? I need to know the chromosomes that you came in with. I, guess, I need to know the I chromosomes. I guess I believe, I, I don't know, I, I guess I just believe that people can Toxic be like... masculinity, right? It, I mean, yeah, that, <laughs> but I also, I also believe that people can be like, in a sense, like born again because like, yeah, like, not to attend these people. I don't think that trans women can have you know kids or get pregnant or anything like that. But that's the discussion that y'all should have been had. Because, like, you could say, like, hey, do you want kids? It's either, like, I do can't have kids. you know how traumatizing or, that is? To know that if you're like, and I'm saying if you're, told, if you're a straight guy, a heterosexual guy, have no interest in dabbling with anything else other than women, and you end up having sex with someone you believe to have always been a woman, and then find out that they used to be a man. That I'm shit not is saying, traumatizing. But that's what, you you're missing the whole point, EJ. You're mm -hmm. missing the damn point. What's the point? My point is that it needs to be discussed prior to being intimate prior to having sex with the person i agree with you on that so what you're saying is like you you're in this mindset of like everybody's out to trick you trick you trick you oh my god they're gonna i'm gonna accidentally sleep with a trans woman and, and that's not the case i'm saying that most people are gonna have a conversation like that before anybody that's a good person mm -hmm. with good morals is gonna have a conversation with you about that before you have sex mm -hmm. because that's only right. If they do it afterward, of course you have every right to a be, lot of mad, people to be shit. mad. You have, I mean, it's a lot of niggas out here fucking raw talking about I'm, you the only I'm one. Saying. I'm not like, I mean, like but, people ain't being shit. I'm not making that a trans no, thing. That's a, 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 a but society that's, thing. But that's where I'm getting at. Like you're making it like it's a bunch of trans people out here doing this, and that's not the case. Because we don't know that. We don't know that. But, you know, just like it's a bunch of niggas out here cheating and, and giving everybody Niggas STDs. don't cheat, but... Right. So, and transgenders <laughs> don't lie about their gender. So, <laughs> they can start that movement. 
my but gosh. okay but seriously though I need to, I need to, I, I appreciate anybody, and, and this is outside the transgender argument, I appreciate anybody who just discloses any possible problems, or not problems, that's, not, that's the wrong word to use. It is. Uh, what's the word, what's the word I'm looking for? Anything that could possibly, yes, discrepancies that could Pick change up. my perception. Or maybe, make, may, maybe change my deci de decision to want to do this. Right. I just, I mean, I... I actually had a conversation like this with my friend the other day and we were talking about um, like, would you be with a man that was bisexual? Mm -hmm. And like, you know, what if you didn't know he was bisexual until like later on? Mm -hmm. And or like he used to be bisexual and like he just want to be with you. Uh -huh. And to be honest, like it's like my friend said some ignorant ass shit. She mm -hmm. said, I don't want no nigga with a loose booty. What's your answer? My answer <laughs> is just don't mm -hmm. tell me. But he did tell you. Now what? Um, I would have to see how I feel about it. I, I can't I can't tell you <laughs> I can't tell you what my answer is gonna be because it would depend on how deep in like I am with this person or anything like that. I, but it, it I think, you know, black well not just black women, I think women yeah, that's a cop out, man. No, I think women, we have this also like homophobic tendency as well do. when it comes to men being gay. And y'all act like y'all are allies too. Because if you see it in a TV show, y'all be like, hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. They gay. or like, Right. Like, like women are fine. Be... <laughs> We're fine with women on women. We're fine with men on men. But when it comes to Let like. Let it be your nigga. Right. Your nigga <laughs> over here moved up with another man. It's yeah. like, wait One a minute. One time in college, you know. To be honest, like I, I would like to date someone who is heterosexual, period. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. There it is. So you answer the question. You're not with that. Sh you're not. You're not with. And if you a man were bisexual, in the past. to be honest, if, like if I was dating somebody and we like a couple years in, and then you disclose to me that you used to be bisexual, it's over. Not because you used to be bisexual, but because you have led, you have not disclosed a big portion of your life to me, and you've hidden that from me for so, so long. So you don't think you coming into this world as a different gender is not a big thing that you hid from me? No, it is a big <laughs> thing. That's why I'm saying you tell somebody that before you are intimate with them, because intimacy is a whole different level of emotion I'm for somebody. I'm looking at finances, too. So I'm, 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 if I'm with this nigga for two years, it's safe to say we've been fucking for more than just the last two days. Okay. So if he tell me in the last two days of our relationship that he used to be bisexual, of course I'm going to leave your oh, ass. Man, what about courting fees, okay? All the outings that we went on. It's like I'm investing in something that's just, that was d doomed to fail from the beginning. Bro. You, what are you saying? You saying before? I say immediately. Woman. Everybody needs to keep it 100 from the very beginning. And that's not just Bro. what your gender is. That's what you have. Any discrepancies so that, that could the, change so the other person. from the very beginning, you told your girl you don't believe in marriage. Well, that, 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 that was something that came later in the relationship. I, so you didn't I believe believed in marriage coming in. But then I went through a phase in the latter half of like in the latter half of our relationship. I think any relationship has the right to you have the right to walk out of a relationship for something. I mean, I was watching Divorce Court the other day, which actually, if you think about getting married, watch Divorce Court. Mm -hmm. That shit, like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm I <laughs> <laughs> I'm chilling. Like, you know what? Let me yeah. get to know really know a nigga first. Word, word. But uh this woman, like, she met this guy and he ended up like through the course of their relationship. Tadding up his face. He was a regular clean cut guy, then all of a sudden he transformed basically into one of the littles. No. Like he had red dreads and tattoos on his face and stuff. Irreconcilable and, differences. Right. And so, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like if you transform, you know, into something else, like that's, you know, you outgrow people or whatever. Yeah. But if you've already had something life altering or life changing happen in your life, you, I don't think off, off bat, first conversation, you should have to disclose that to somebody. Mm -hmm. If you want to, if you're yeah. an honest person, yeah. like if you were just like a blunt ass person, like, like, look, nigga, I'm celibate. Look, nigga, I'm a trans woman. The, then do it. Yeah. But I don't think that that should be expected right off because there's a lot of shit. It's a lot of niggas that be bipolar, schizophrenic. I would love it if people would. would bring it would that be to awesome. But guess what? A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't. So um, I don't think they should just have to do it because that's just like messed up. Yeah. Like that's 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 messed up to expect that. Now, I don't agree with waiting until after you have sex with somebody to tell them that you're trans mm -hmm. because you have misled this person. However, before getting intimate, you should definitely do it. 
And that's right. that's that. I feel you. Hey, we're going to wrap this shit up, though. So, hey, y'all know you know how to follow me. It's at E-J-I-K-E-J-A-M-A-L. Yo, definitely follow the show, this problematic safe place, at We The Safe Place, IG, Twitter. Yo, also listen to us, subscribe on your favorite podcast app, Apple, 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 SoundCloud. iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, all that. All of that. Yeah, if y'all want to see the visuals on the show, we are definitely on YouTube. So just keep that in mind. It's your girl. Um, it's Desi Cakes. You can find me on Instagram and on Twitter. I-T-S-D-E-S-I-C-A-K-E-S. Man, every time it gets me. But um, yeah. another thing that I wanted our supporters to go out and do is to rate us. Um, if you mm. could rate us on the iTunes app and just give us five stars, leave a comment or something. Like We'll get, we'll definitely give you a shout out if it happens because right yeah. now we have no ratings. We yeah. got a lot of people listening and nobody rating yeah, us. Yeah, because we so. get love out here, man. We definitely appreciate yeah, the shout outs too. Let people know that you, you fuck with us and we fuck with y'all and we'll be, you know, we'll be shouting out any and everybody that does ratings for us. So yeah. um, just keep that in mind if you can. And uh, other than that, we out. All right.